I wonder how disgusting my engine coolant is going to be after 16 years. In this episode of Aston1936.com, I'm going to show you how to drain the engine coolant uh, from the V12 uh, engine. Now, this is going to be a two-part series. This first part is how to drain the coolant, and later on I'm going to do a second part, how to refill and purge the air from uh, the system. The reason I'm doing it in two parts is because uh, some projects don't require you to do the, uh, the purge, so I just wanted to show you how to get the fluid out to begin with, and then in another short video I'll show you how to refill it. So my car is a 2005. That means it's been 16 years, possibly, since the coolant's been changed. Uh, I've only owned the car for eight years, and in my ownership, I've never changed the coolant. Uh, if you go and you check the specs for the coolant, uh, at best, you should probably see five to eight years kind of life out of it. Um, these extended life oat coolants that they use can go very long times, but you know, I know it has, at least hasn't been changed in eight years, and I don't have it in the service history from my previous owner, so it's time for my car. Now, in another video, which I'll have linked up here, I've already explained how to choose the right coolant. We're going to be using a Havoline Oat, O-A-T, coolant in a 50-50 concentration when it comes time to refill it. So all this video is going to be covering is how do we drop the coolant out um, and make the least amount of mess possible while we're doing it. So let me show you how to get started on that. So to drain the coolant from the car, we don't need uh, any particularly advanced tools. Uh, to open the drain plug, you need a broad tip. So your, basically your biggest tip flat blade screwdriver will be the best tool for that to take the drain plug out. Um, an inspection light will be a good idea. Now an alternative way to draining it out if you're having trouble getting the drain plug out is we could pull off the lower uh, water pump uh, radiator hose and for that you'd need a uh, Phillips screwdriver to work the Jubilee clip and then I have this water pump hose pick tool uh, which could if we need to pull that hose off uh, we probably don't need to use that the rest of the project is pretty much mess control so I have my um, coolant uh, drain bucket here um, hopefully this is enough to catch all of the coolant. If it isn't, I'll have to put the drain plug in temporarily while I transfer this to some empty milk jugs. And then even with this, it's going to spill. It's going to get into this lower radiator grill area. So I've got my big black plastic drip tray that I'm going to lay out underneath the car. And I've got some uh, absorbent pig mat uh, towel. You could just use paper towels or shop rags, but this stuff absorbs a lot of drips. And then, of course, I have my trusty uh, shop towel. So uh, not really some, any serious advanced tools, uh, but get your cleanup stuff together because you're going to make a mess. So the first steps of the process are actually some prerequisites that I've already done videos on. Uh, you're going to need to get the aerodynamic under tray off the car uh, because that's where all the coolant's going to spill down to. Um, and you need to get in there with your... Uh, that that tray off to be able to get access to the drain plug. So to get the aerodynamic under tray off, there'll be a link up here, you'll also need to get it off the ground on jack stands because you're going to be working underneath the car. Check out my videos. Now I also have the engine slam panel removed right now because I decided since I'm going to be servicing the cooling system, I also wanted to clean the radiator uh, exterior, exterior surfaces. So I'll have a link to that video up here. Um, now a logical time to do the coolant change is when you're doing your two-year annual service and you're going to have the under tray off anyways. So you're already going to have all that work done and all we're going to be talking about is the extra work now of draining the cooling from the car. So let's get that plug pulled. Two quick pieces of advice before we start pulling the drain plug. Uh, absolutely want to do this process with the engine cool. Uh, we're going to be underneath there. There's going to be fluid dripping out. The last thing you want it to be is scorching hot uh, coolant. So, um, you know, it's probably you can run the engine for a minute, to, for one minute to pull it into the garage, but you don't want the engine hot while you're doing this work. Um, the other thing we want to do is we want to remove the cap from the uh, coolant reservoir uh, because as we pull the drain, we want to break the vacuum that's going to, will start to build up in the system. So we're just basically going to pull the cap off 
and uh, set the cap aside. Now all the air can slip back into the system uh, here and we can get underneath and pull the drain plug. All right, so we're underneath the car. Normally the aerodynamic under tray is hiding it. What we're after is right here. This is the coolant drain plug. Um, now my car has a modification done to it. You will probably have your air box right here. It won't really affect anything. In fact, it makes it easier for us to film this. And this zip tie is holding my uh, cold air intake duct. This won't be there in your car unless you have a, uh, an air box delete kit installed. So before we pull that plug though, if you are going to reuse your uh, coolant, uh, you're not flushing it, but you're just gonna reuse it, you should wipe down this area if you're gonna catch it in your uh, drain pan, just so you get as much of the dirt off that might be accumulated down here. So once you're cleaned up, what I'm worried about is that this drain port is behind this uh, shroud. So uh, some portion of the coolant's gonna start dropping in here and gonna start raining out all these other holes. Now that's gonna be inevitable, but what I did is I took a piece of shop towel and I rolled it up into a bit of a sausage and I'm just gonna take it in here and stuff it. My idea, which may be stupid, um, is to plug the passageway as much as I possibly can that the coolant would fall into. Um, and I don't mind, a, you know, the rag can get soggy and it'll slow down most of the coolant that would be going backwards into that uh, shroud area, but the coolant's really gonna spill out the front here. So I have my uh, drain bucket here and I don't know exactly how many gallons of coolant I'm gonna get out. Uh, this holds up to four. So um, I may have to put, close the plug off again to stop the flow and go transfer this, but let's give this a shot and see what my coolant looks like. All right, so what's going on here is that the plug has a retainer, I guess. There we go. It's pretty, pretty, pretty good. Yeah, smells like uh, antifreeze. Looks like antifreeze. I'm gonna. Uh, would you like to comment on your uh, glycol shower? Yeah, well, as my cameraman's pointing out, I've just had a glycol shower. If, if you've ever worked under a car and you've got the beautiful feeling of something running down your underarm and into your armpit, uh, you can see it's raining down. My sausage idea really hasn't done a whole lot. Uh, it probably helped uh, for a while. But, uh, you know, we're at the short end of the draining now. Most of it's landing on the drip tray, which I have now overflowing, spilling into a trash can. And I have coolant all over the floor. So I'm going to grab some pig mat. And there is, cameraman can probably show you, spills on every side of the, the tray. But that's what pig mat is great for. Well, now that the coolant rainstorm has subsided and I've scrubbed myself up a little bit and we let it finish dripping and we collected it all down, uh, here's what I got out. And what we can see here is about nine and a half liters, about two and a half gallons of oat coolant. So if this is 15 years old, it looks like it's in tremendous condition. Um, and uh, maybe it's been changed by the previous owner just before I bought it or something like that. If you knew this fluid wasn't very old, uh, you could probably run this through um, a coffee filter to strain out any of the gribbly bits uh, that got in around the edges of the dirty pans and things like that. And then you could reuse this coolant uh, if you aren't purposely trying to flush and change your coolant. But for me, uh, I still don't know the age of this coolant, so I'm gonna put some fresh coolant in next. 
So while we have the old coolant out here in the bucket, I thought I'd use my trusty coolant tester. Let's just see what freeze protection level this was still uh, able to do. So I'm going to squeeze out the air and suck up a load of the old coolant. And we'll see what the tool says. So there we are. And yeah, that's degrees C. That's somewhere near minus 40 uh, degrees Celsius, which is also minus 40 degrees uh, uh, Fahrenheit. So as far as the uh, antifreeze protection properties, uh, this coolant's still in great shape. Now the anti-corrosive properties, I don't know how long it's been in the car. Uh, so it might, you know, the chemicals that you know, protect it for corrosion um, may fade off with time. So I'm still going to change my coolant. But uh, anyways, if you've got your coolant out, you might want to do a quick check and see what condition it's in. So just a quick tip, if you're planning on reusing the fluid that you drained out of your car, if it's like mine, you're going to have some floaters of dirt in it that came out either from the actual with the fluid or maybe they were debris that fell down uh, through all the dripping and everything else. So if you want to reuse it, I really wouldn't suggest putting it back into the car until you run it through a filter. So that's really not a hard process. This is just uh, a standard coffee filter. And what I'm going to do is put it in my coolant funnel. And we're just going to run all the coolant, uh, let it drip through the, uh, the coffee filter uh, into another container like a, a clean uh, distilled water jug or something else that you might have available. Uh, so let me just show you how to do that. It's going to take a little while to do it, but you'll get the idea. Turn that hold a bit. Well, it doesn't go particularly fast, but it's certainly going to get the job done. So, uh, and then saves us from going down the drain or, or to a recycling facility. All right. Well, I'm going to let the car sit and drip uh, for probably overnight, and then we'll come back and put the drain plug in um, and take it from there. Well, <laughs> it's been a few hours, and now that the antifreeze or rain has stopped on my car, uh, I've stopped. I've I cleaned up the bucket, I cleaned up my drip tray, I cleaned up my floor, I cleaned up the fluid and went up my arm, and I got in, a, in behind here uh, with some rags and sopped up the, uh, the coolant and other muck that was up there anyways. And now that it's stopped dripping, we could maybe come in here for a closer look at the, uh, the drain plug. And it doesn't come all the way out on its own, but basically it has a, uh, uh, it's a it's a split connection, and we can just uh, squeeze it a little bit by pressing up and then pulling it out. And let's go over to the bench and have a look at it here. So basically it just has a rubber gasket uh, that's on here. So this part's all plastic, so you kind of have to be delicate with it. But you'll want to just check this rubber gasket that it's healthy. Um, if it's starting to deteriorate, I've been told that uh, you can get a replacement just for that. And, uh, you know, so now you know how it goes in and out. Uh, you'll be able to take it out on your car pretty easily. So uh, let's go put it back in and uh, seal up my car. So I'm finished draining my car. And so let's go ahead and put the drain plug in. And I'm definitely just going to start this by hand because this is plastic threading in a plastic tank. And I'm going to pay attention while I'm doing this to that rubber gasket. There is no torque spec on this, but I don't want to crush it uh, where it'll actually squeeze out of the space. Um, so I want to get it down squashed. But there. So you can just you can basically see between this turn and this turn, it's starting to squeeze out. And I'm just going to give it maybe a quarter turn more um, and call it good. Um, I can always, and then I'm going to wipe it off to make sure there's no drip. <coughs> because afterwards it's going to be, you're going to be wondering, well, is it still leaking? And you're going to want to make sure uh, that no new drips have formed after you've dried it out. Well, that's pretty much it. With the drain plug back in, we can get on with 
uh, whatever was the reason we were draining the coolant. You might be changing your coolant hoses, you might be changing your water pump, you might be flushing your coolant. Um, so uh, with coolant out, you can get going on that project. So down here, you're gonna find a link to the companion uh, blog article where I'll talk about uh, the tools and maybe a link to the, uh, the gasket for the drain plug if I can find it. Um, up here, you'll probably find the next video in the series, which will probably be um, in putting coolant back in the car and burping the system properly, which is going to be an important process you're going to have to follow. Uh, so check that out and you'll learn all about what coolant to use and all that kind of stuff. Um, if you'd like to get videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe and you'll get notified automatically. And as always, I love to hear your comments. Please leave those down below. Thanks for watching.